The building um, consists really of, of three main theatres. There's, there's the main auditorium, which is a 430 seat, seat theatre, which is a raked theatre, very much like a traditional theatre with fixed seating. Uh, it has an orchestra pit, a uh, fly tower for, for, um, for props, etc. So it is a fully fledged operating theatre to the highest standard. And since the day it's been open, it's been in demand. At the moment, right now, while we're standing here, Idols uh, is being filmed, as well as another series called Clash of the Choirs. And so it's working. The actual construction period was about 18 plus months. And I'm pleased to say it was done on time, within budget. And I think a lot of the success depends on the team. And the team we used is a team we know and have trust and have been used for many projects. And I think that goes to the success of many projects when you're working with a good, competent team. And it was a diverse team from sound specialists, theatre specialists, architects, engineers. The, the first critical thoughts that entered our minds when we looked at the design and when I conceptualised the ideas was that this place is filled with people walking and that the building needed to respond to the pedestrian paths that were marked. Another one is that the building needed to be very open for people, that it shouldn't be secretive and dark. And the other th critical thing that I always think just about every building is that you need to be able to orient yourself around the building, in outside and inside, without uh, having to figure out from a map on the wall how to get in or out of the building. So I like buildings that are transparent. And so there was a certain level of transparency and the symbolism to be exactly clear. Uh, so as if the building was naked, in a way. In, in fact, we had three clients. It, it was mainly like, I called it the three-headed snake. <laughs> but it was the client being the public works, uh, no, um, you know, the Johannesburg, developed, uh, Johannesburg property company actually, then the actual client user, which was arts and culture, and then the building was done through a public-private partnership. So in fact, our direct employer, another client, was the developer. And you know, they aims ultimately were for the same, but the method of doing anything could be very different. And so it, there was a huge struggle, I think, in terms of people. Well, there were some other technical challenges as well. One of the, perhaps the biggest, is the curved walls on the outside of the structure. The architects did a lovely design with two curved walls, uh, but they didn't only curve in one plane. Um, they curved horizontally and vertically, creating almost a parabolic shape with a varying curve. So the original shutter work that would have been designed would have been very complex. And so some compromises were made. Uh, we weren't ever going to go to a straight wall, but at least it has a consistent curve now uh, so that shutters could be reused rather than a design specific shutter for that angle. There's an ArcelorMittal uh, cladding system that works like shingles, which uh, we found and obviously because it works like shingles it takes the toroid curvature much better. I suspect that now, in retrospect, they would have probably rather have done it in concrete. They said it was cost-wise just not acceptable. But that was the perception at the time, so then we just said, okay, we'll go for cladding structures. What she wanted for the theatre was an outside lounge, a huge space where people could gather, a foyer before the foyer. And I came to her office and I saw all her workers playing with bits and pieces of stockings. They were pulling stockings here, they were pulling stockings there. And I looked at this beautiful building and the first thing that I thought of was this building reminded me of musical instruments. There were curves of cellos, there were curves of violins, there were bells of double basses. And we should just put strings on it. That's all we should do. We should take the building, we should treat it as this. Okay, so the first, the first major challenge was to, was to go through a glass wall because you've got a tensile structure anchored with some significant loads to a concrete structure. 
you've got cables. How do you go through a glass wall? So you've got to, we, we had to move through the glass wall with cables and then sleeve the glass wall with sleeves and, and fabricated uh, uh, members that weatherproof the glass wall, but were able to cope with that penetration. So the penetration from the outside through the glass wall was, the, uh, was, the, was, was a challenge. We had to make the structure very rigid and very stiff because wind loading is a huge problem because essentially you, you can build a, you're building a sail, right, which can catch the wind. But you don't, you don't want any dynamic loads, you don't want the thing to, dump, to jump up and down, you want as rigid as possible. So it is anchored, it is anchored um, at various points. The Soweto Theatre is now on the tourist route into Soweto and we've seen emerging some support uh, functions such as local uh, shabins in the areas developing a little more towards the tourist market and so that will develop more and come visit us in the Soweto Theatre. It's still though the first part of a much bigger and challenging project so now we carry on.